Welcome to Flutter Teacher. So in this video, I'm going to talk about seven important silent features of the list that every Flutter and Dart programmer must know. So without wasting time, let's get started. Let's examine the first one. Do you know when we create a list, it's possible to specify if and the loop in order to construct your values? Let's look at this example. In this case, I'm creating the list using where keyword. It's a, it's a list of items. 10 and 20, these are the first and second values of my list. For specifying third value, I'm using if here. It means when this condition is true, then only this element will be stored inside the list. Otherwise, this element won't be stored. So in this case, 10 greater than 5, this condition is true. That's the reason 30 will be assigned as a value in this items list. The next five elements I'm constructing using the for loop. You can see the for loop is starting from the value 1. It's going up to the 5. And here I'm placing i. It means the values of i that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be assigned to this. So when I run this program, you can see the final values of item list are 10, 20. These are the values that I have specified here. 30 is coming from this if and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coming from this for loop. Let's say if I change the condition. Now the condition is 10 greater than 50. It's obviously false. And when I read and when I rerun this program, you can see this is my final list. The 30 is missing here. Let's look at the second point. That supports use of spread operator, that is use of three dots in order to construct the list. Let's understand this example. In this case, I have a list one with three values 10, 20, and 30. I want to create a list 2. Here I have specified 3 values 15, 25 and 35. Remaining values I want to get from list 1. So simply I can place these 3 dots. These are actually called the spread operator and I have specified list 1. It means list 2 will have these 3 values and remaining values will be obtained from the list 1. In case of list 3, I am writing 100 and 200. These are the 2 values that I want for this list 3. Then the next value should come from list 1. That's why I have specified 3 dots and list 1. So this spread operator will allow me to get the values from list 1. And thereafter, I want the values from list 3. That's the reason I have specified 3 dots and list 2. So it means this list 3 will have this 100 and 200. Then the values from list 1 and then the values from list 2. So when I run this program, you can see list 1 has a value 10, 20, 30. List 2 has a value 15, 25, and 35. These are the values that I specified. Then remaining three values are taken from the list 1 as I have specified in my code. For list 3, you can observe 100 and 200. These are the two values that I specified in the code. 10, 20, 30 is actually coming from the list 1. This is because of due to spread operator. And the next three values 15, 25, and 35, these are coming from the list 2. That this is because I have specified the spread operator. Let's look at the third point. Whenever we try to go beyond the list index, we'll get a range error. Let's understand this example. In this case, I have a list of animals. Here I have total four animals. So that the index will start from zero, then one, two, and three. So I have only four elements in the list. And I'm trying to print the animal at fifth location, which is actually not available. So when I run this program, you can see I will get an exception and it says out of range and it says index should be less than 4. Let's understand this example. In this case, I'm trying to print the specific element using element add method. Here I have specified the index 4, which is of course not available in the list because I have only 4 element and the last element is positioned at the third index. So when I run this program, again, I will get an exception called range error. It says the index should be less than 4. Let's look at the fourth point and which is very important point. Do you know whenever we use foreign loop or foreign loop in order to perform list iteration, if you perform any modification with the values, your values are not actually get modified. Look at this program. In this program, I have created a list of items using var keyword and here I have specified five values in the list. In this case, I'm using foreign loop in order to iterate the elements. While iterating the element, I'm modifying the values of element. Simply, I'm trying to add one in the value so that I'm expecting the value should be 11, 21, 31, 41, and 50. 
and after performing the loop, I am again printing the original values. Now you can see when I run this program, of course I am getting 11, 21, 31, 41 and 51 on the screen. But when I am printing the original values, you can see I found that the original values of list are unmodified. The same case will happen if I use the for each loop. So in for each loop, I am trying to add value 5 in each and every element. So you can see on output, I am getting the values 15, 25, 35, 45 and 55. So I feel that I am actually modifying the values. But practically, when I print the original lists, I am getting that my list is unmodified. Make sure that whenever we use foreign loop or foreign loop in order to iterate the list, if you perform any modification of list values, your list values are actually remains unmodified. Now you might have a question, what happens if I use normal for loop and if I modify the values? So make sure when you use normal for loop and when you modify the values, your modification is actually performed on the list values. Let's understand a few points. Do you know list is actually the abstract class? For those who don't know abstract class and all those things, don't worry, we'll cover all those topics in my upcoming videos. For those who actually know what is abstract class, they might have got surprised that if list is actually the abstract class, then how it's possible to call the constructor? Even I can run this program, this program simply gives me an output. So how it works if the list is abstract class? Make sure that all the constructors of list are actually the factory constructor and internally when your program is getting executed, the concrete implementation of your list is actually getting instantiated instead of creating the object of list class. That's the reason even your list is abstract class, you are not getting an error while constructing the object of list because practically in the items, it is not receiving the object of list, it's actually receiving the concrete implementation of the list which is performed inside the dart machine. Let's examine the sixth point and which is a very important point. We really need this point in case of letter application development. So far we have seen a list with only a normal list of values. It's possible to have a list of list. What do you mean by it? It means list can contain list itself. Let's look at this example. Here we can see I have a list and the type of list is actually a list of integer means this particular this particular type of list is called a matrix. So those who have come from C, C++ and Java background, you might have understood that this is actually a two dimensional array or somebody says this is actually a multi dimensional array. In this case, your elements will be arranged logically in the form of rows and columns. So in order to access the element, you have to specify the row number as well as the column number. Now here I have specified the values. These are the values of 0th row, then the values of 1st row and these are the values of 2nd row. So simply I am printing the values of this list. For those who don't understood how this loop is working, then simply stop this video and try to understand it by yourself. Let's look at the seventh and the last point. In this case, I'm creating an empty list without specifying any value and I have changed the length to five. That is, initially I have zero element and when I write length is equals to five, now this list will hold the five elements. The question here is, this list don't have the actual values. And what happens if I print the values of list? So if I print the values, I will get the null. Make sure that I'm in the environment called null safety. For those who don't know what is null safety and all those things, don't worry, we'll cover all these things in the upcoming videos. But for those who understand what is null safety, it's really a surprising thing. Even if I'm in the environment of null safety, the values of list are by default null if they are not initialized. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video where I will talk about the methods and properties of the list. If you really like the way I'm teaching, then don't forget to like this video, share it, subscribe my channel and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.